Hey guys, it's Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we'll be talking about the future of coin shows. Will they be around in the next five years? We're going to give our opinion and just something that we're picking up on in the coin hobby. But let's get this video started. As you guys know, since the beginning of the global pandemic, things have started to change for the coin hobby and for a lot of other hobbies. So when we started buying and selling old U.S. coins, we started when uh, you know the world was in lockdown. We were on spring break, and we couldn't go back to school for months. And I remember saying, I'm going to buy and sell and use Instagram as a tool for doing so. And over the period of time, we moved from Instagram to eBay to YouTube, and now we use all of them to sell coins to you guys, to reach out to you guys. And so it's been a real blessing to be able to do that. But I think that there's been a really kind of, like I said, a big shift because um, a lot of the older people, a lot of the people that are in the hobby for a long period of time, they're used to having not as much technology being used to add coins to their collection. They want to go to a show. They want to meet with a, a dealer or a different collector. They want to exchange coins. And a lot of that's still happening today. But I do think that there has been a shift because there's a lot of people that since the pandemic has happened have passed away. And there are a lot of people that are kind of moving out of the hobby that say, hey, it's just not for me anymore. This is a younger man's game now. And that's nothing to push back on any particular group. But it's mainly to say that uh, there's been a, a rise in auction houses. There have been a rise in different eBay stores. There have been a rise in different YouTube channels. There's been a rise in many Instagrams. Um, since the big pandemic has started, people are even using Reddit and now MyCollect. And uh, so the reason why we're talking about this today is because we feel like it's an important discussion to have. Our opinion, me and Casey's opinion, is that a lot of the greater coins from the coin shows have left. A lot of them have been either sent to auction houses. A lot of them have been sold to dealers that have sold the coins to the collectors to begin with. You know, when we're talking about, you know, different coins... Uh, the coins we're going to talk about today even, we ended up handling these coins for the collector partially when we were selling them to CAC. Or if we were to sell a coin to somebody, then they were selling coins that they didn't want back to us. So it's almost like a constant loop if you end up treating collectors well. And so when we go through a lot of the shows, especially the TNA show in June, there just wasn't anything to be seen or bought. A lot of it was coins that We've seen for many shows. We've even seen for sh since the last TNA show. And so uh, when, when you look at auctions and when you look at, um, you know, online, it seems like there's just a wide scope of possibilities for you to be able to pick up coins for your collection. And technology is being used almost as a tool so people can do so. And so as we progress through the hobby, we see that a lot of young people are coming up into the hobby trying to buy and sell coins. And we're also seeing a lot of older people move towards auction houses. And there's a few reasons for doing so, right? You know, whenever, whenever you go to a coin show and it's, you know, you're getting in at the $3 entry fee or you're getting in at the early bird, even, some of, even a lot of the coins are already gone at that point. People are already speaking, you know, on different channels and they're talking about, hey, when I get to the show, I'm going to buy those 40 coins from you and I'm going to take them out of the show and sell them to my clients. Uh, a lot of that stuff is happening and it's gotten even more advanced since uh, moving more towards technology. You know, I was going to the TNA show like like we were talking about, and there's a few major dealers there that didn't want to speak to any collectors, that didn't want to sell to any collectors because they could find people that would pay more money online than at the show. And so there were some, collect there were some dealers that stayed from the beginning of the early bird all the way until when the public started to come in. And they said, okay, guys, we'll see you. You know, they, they bought thousand dollar tables and they're not selling to the public and I think that the reason being is that there's so many people that we don't think about that are have never gone to a coin show that are really avid collectors there's been our clients even there's a lot of people that you know they have farms or they're in the middle of nowhere or they are in the city and they have a really intense job and a lot of them just say hey it's so much work to go to a coin show. It's so there's so much things that I I can't really control when I go to a coin show. The coins that I'm going there for may not be there. 
The people that have the coins may not be willing to budge on price. They might be selling the coins for more than auction comps are even at. So for me, I feel like there needs to be a recalibration of coin shows. There needs to be more of an emphasis on coin collectors at coin shows, especially with holding and making inventory available and being almost a face to the public. I know that we're still working on that personally because there is such a draw to being able to buy all those coins for a good price, being there early, and then coming home and them offering them to you guys. But to in order for, I guess, the whole hobby to remain steady and keep kind of, um, you know, coin shows going, we have to almost be there and be with a smile on our face. And so I feel like in the next five to ten years, if things continue the way that they are, um, I don't think coin shows will exist. And the reason being is because there's... You know, when you're online, you may pay a little bit more. You may, uh, you know, it might take you a little while to find the coin, but there's a lot less headaches. There's a lot less uncertainty, and people will end up paying that premium so they don't have to worry about driving to the show, going to the show, and having all the uncertainty of, will I be able to buy what I want today? They get to wait until the auction on Sunday night for David Lawrence or Great Collections, and then they buy the coin that they want, and they put it in their collection, and they're happy about it. Sometimes that's what we need to do, but coin shows don't offer that necessarily for every collector. And so let me know what you guys think of what we're talking about today. Do you guys feel like coin shows are going to be here in the next five to 10 years? Do you think that online is going to take it over? I want you guys to let me know down below. And so another big thing that we looked at at the show is that how many older people are in coins, how many older people are selling coins, dealing in coins at the show. And it seemed like at least 60, 70% of the dealers are old enough to be able to pass away in the next five to 10 years. Who's going to take those spots? Who's going to, who's going to fill those, those tables. And right now I'm not seeing a whole lot of people that are willing to fill those tables. There's a lot of kids that, like I said, that buy at the shows and they're more technologically savvy and be able to sell those coins elsewhere. And so let's show you guys these coins that we picked up from our friend, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse, for giving us these coins to show you guys. They're two. They're four $20 gold pieces. They're pretty phenomenal, and uh, we're so excited that we get to share them with you today. And, uh, yeah, let's show them. All right, guys, so here's the four $20 gold pieces. We have this 1927 St. Guns. It's graded Min State 65+. Plus. A little bit too baggy in their left field, in my opinion, for it to be a 66. The luster and the color is really nice. Sometimes they're a little bit drowned out. You're gonna see a 62 St. Gaudens in this video, and it's gonna be a little bit of a stark difference for you, and you're gonna see why it was graded 62, but definitely a fabulous coin, gorgeous coin. So this is the 62 that I was talking about. You can see that the luster is a little bit suppressed. I don't know if there's any haze in the coin, but the luster is a little bit subdued. There are some bigger hits in the fields, as you can see in the left rays there. It is an OGH holder. People do like that a lot. Then we have this 1927 in 66. So you can see just the fabulous color and the really nice luster of the coin. I think we submitted most of these coins to PCG, I'm sorry, to CAC for the collector. There is a hit right in the Eagle's wing on the reverse. But other than that, it's pretty phenomenal. Definitely a nice, gorgeous gold coin. And the last coin I want to show you guys is this 1904 $20 gold piece. It's great mid-state 64 by PCGS. Definitely a lot of hits on the fields, especially on the cheek. It would definitely need a more clean cheek to be a gem. But when you get to hold really nice gold coins, sometimes that's all you need. And so... We're thank very thankful that Jesse was able to show us and make these coins available to us. If you guys want to check them out, AcousticCollectibles.com. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on the discussion that we had. Do you think that coin shows will be here in the next 5 10 years? Or they won't be here in the next 5 to 10 years? Uh, I'd like to hear your opinion down below. Uh, subscribe if you're new. We're coming out with videos every single week. And we want you to be a part. We'll see you guys in the next video.